Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about one more concept in operating system that is types of threads. So in our previous session, we have discussed about what is the thread and what is the difference between thread and a process. And now we'll see a different types of threads. So here, the threads are classified into two categories. So one is user level threads and another one is a kernel level threads. So the major difference among these two is, so this is a managed by user. It is a managed by user. So that means the creation and everything will be done by the user. And here the kernel level, these threads are managed by operating system. Managed by operating system. And so there is no support of OS. There will be no support of OS. And here, so there will be a support of OS in creation. But one thing you have to remember so everything will be executed by the operating system that means a kernel itself so there should be a mapping there should be a mapping of user level threads to kernel level threads kernel level threads in order to execute these user level threads so as there is no support of OS, so there should be some sort of mapping between user level threads and kernel level threads. So there are different types of mapping, one to one, many to one, one to many, etc. So that we'll see in our next session. Now we'll see what exactly the differences between the user level threads and kernel level threads. See, so let us divide uh, into two parts. So one is a user level, another one is a kernel level. So user level and this side I will write kernel level. Right. So the first difference just now we have discussed that implemented by user. So these user level threads are implemented by the user itself. So the name itself indicates right. So this is a thread okay. And here also I'll write thread. Right. So here the kernel level threads were implemented by kernel. By kernel, which is a heart of operating system, right? Next context switching. is easy and context switching is difficult so this is just comparison right so when compared to the user level threads so context switching will be different so now what is meant by context switching already we have discussed about this context switching in our previous session while discussing about process and threads. So once again, I will recall it. So context switching means, so if one process is being executed, either it may be a process or a thread, right? If one process or one thread is being executed, at the same time, if there is another process or a thread which is having the highest priority, so then there should be a switching between one process to another process, right? So that type of uh, transformation or switching we call it as a context switching so here the, everything will be done by the user and there is no support of operating system so that's why that the main reason why the context switching is easy in this user level threads and here it will be somewhat difficult because it need some operating system that means a kernel system calls like that right then multi-threading so if it is a user level thread multi-threading is not compatible 
is not a compatible right so multi threading is not compatible so everything will be implemented like a single threaded process right and here multi threading is compatible so multi threading means running multiple threads concurrently multi threading is compatible and next implementation is easy and takes less time and takes less time similarly here comparison the implementation the implementation is difficult or complicated only when comparison right it did uh, and takes more time just with the comparison right so when compared to the user level threads the implementation of kernel level threads is somewhat it takes more time right blocking operation blocking operation means so if one thread one thread is in blocking state is in blocking state all the remaining all the remaining will be in blocking state in blocking state right so blocking state means it will be waiting for some resources or io operations right if if the thread is waiting for io operations or any resources automatically the the thread will be in the blocking state blocking operation and coming to here if any thread any thread is in blocking state is in blocking state then other threads will not be in blocking state so alternate it will move on to the another kernel and it will keep on executing right so there will be no stop for this kernel level uh, threads because the threads will be executed by the operating system itself so even though the user level threads so these user level threads should be mapped with kernel level threads and there it will be executed so if one block i mean if one thread of this user level is blocked that all the threads related to the same process will be in a blocking state okay so here we are saying that a complete process is divided into multiple threads so among all those threads if any one of the thread is in a blocking state automatically all the remaining threads will becomes in a blocking state so complete process will be in a blocking state so that there doesn't happens in this kernel level mode right so in this kernel level thread if one thread is in a blocking state immediately the kernel will execute another thread okay then so these threads are recognized these threads are recognized sorry doesn't recognize by os that means os doesn't recognize these user level threads okay so these threads doesn't recognized by operating system but here these threads recognized by operating system because the kernel itself creates the, these threads and the kernel itself implements these threads right so doesn't recognize and this is recognized by operating system next the next difference
थ्रेड मैनेजमेंट इज इजी सो थ्रेड मैनेजमेंट इज इजी एंड हियर थ्रेड मैनेजमेंट is difficult because so here there will be a thread library thread library and in this library there will be a code available for code available for thread creation creation destroy data transfer etc so for all these things the code will be available in this thread library so obviously if immediately the creation a destroy and data transfer everything will be maintained in this thread library of user level so it will be very easy to create or to destroy or data transfer but here so here also the code will be shared okay here also the code will be available but there will be involvement of os so in order to create a thread there will be some system calls system calls will be there for creation everything okay for creation and everything there will be some sort of system calls so calling the system call executing the system call so it, it involvement of os will be there so that's why the thread management is somewhat difficult thread management is creation of thread uh, de destroying and the data transfer etc everything related to the thread right so here for everything there should be a system calls next so hardware support is not required hardware support is not necessary or not required but here so we are uh, th this kernel level threads are executed by the kernel so there should be the hardware support so hardware support hardware support is required is required okay then so here runs on any operating system so these threads these user level threads will be running on any operating system because so everything will be available in the thread library okay if you are having the thread library so we can run these kernel level threads uh, sorry user level threads so that's why so it runs on any operating system but here so kernel level threads will be created and running on kernel that means related to the operating system so this is the operating system specific so these are the operating system specific so for every operating system there will be a different kernel level threads right so operating system specific is the kernel level threads right so these are the major differences between the kernel level threads and user level threads right so only one thing so these uh, user level threads were created by the user so that will also right so creates created by the user in user space so there will be different spaces which we have discussed in the earlier sessions right so kernel space and the user space so these user level threads were created by the user in the user space and here created by kernel in kernel space in kernel space so how they are created so these user level threads are created with the help of code available in the thread library 
but here how these kernel level threads are created these are created with the help of system calls available in the kernel right so that's why the thread management will be easy here difficult there okay so these are the major differences of user level threads and kernel level threads so whatever it may be so the operating system will execute the thread so that's why the user threads should be mapped to the kernel level threads and those threads should be being executed by the operating system so for that there will be a mapping and there are different types of mapping and that we will discuss in our next session the mapping of user level threads to kernel level threads right so let's stop here hope you enjoyed the session and if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much